plus the potential term is equal to energy times the wave function. And I'm hoping by now you kind of remember the key difference between the time-independent Schrodinger equation and time-dependent Schrodinger equation, which we actually started out with. And the key difference, if, uh, um, um, if you kind of want to note it for conceptual purposes, is really on the right-hand side. The time-dependent time Schrodinger equation was written out as uh, I h bar partial time derivative of the time dependent wave function. And really, this here is the energy operator. This is the mathematical device that's measuring energy of this wave function. So conceptually, when you go from time dependent Schrodinger equation to time independent Schrodinger equation, you are making an assumption that whatever state you are dealing with is at a very particular energy. It's at an, in an energy eigenstate. It's one of those stationary states. Oh, I guess that's actually covered in the reading assignment due tonight. <laughs> oh, how are stationary states stationary? <laughs> um, um, that's one of the senses in which it's stationary. Um, so, um, so these energy eigenstates are the um, I guess simplest to, uh, wave function statue to deal with, so that's what we'll be dealing with most of the time. So uh, with the step potential that we are going to talk about, uh, I guess when you are visualizing it, it's easy to visualize it as a kind of traveling wave solution particle, but we are going to write down the time independent version, sort of, you know, this is the energy eigenstate, and we are sort of choosing to look at stationary um, picture like what you would have after a product stream of particle has come for a long time and then, you know, what do you see? Okay, okay. so we've been dealing with this uh, Schrodinger equation actually for some time now. We've, I think, used this for uh, infinite square well, right? So as a reminder, for infinite square well, this is how it got applied to. So you have, um, this is the infinite square well, the potential goes to infinity at either end, and potential is zero here. So for this infinite square well, the Schrodinger equation became really simple because outside here, wave function has to be zero. Otherwise, this term goes to infinity, and we don't really want to deal with infinities. Or like, so, um, so when you look at the, all the wave function solutions, uh, they all have to come, come to zero at the end, no matter what happens in between. And in between, potential is zero, so the Schrodinger equation becomes pretty simple. It simply becomes the kinetic energy term, minus h bar squared over 2m, uh, double position derivative of wave function is the energy wave function, and we get an oscillatory solution. You get you know, sines and cosines with these matching boundary conditions that at the end, the wave function um, has to be zero. Like, that ring a bell? Like, that's the only detailed uh, calculation we have done so far. And I guess for a while, I thought maybe we will try doing this with a finite well, but I think that comes into the same problem. The finite well calculation is actually mathematically involved, and it's kind of numeric. It has to be all numerical in the end, so I don't think it's any kind of question I can give you on the final exam and, or exams anyway. So, <laughs> so we'll skip finite uh, square well also. You can read about it. Uh, we might do some simulations on homework, but um, so. This is the only context where we have actually solved the Schrodinger equation so far. And I'm giving you one additional context where you can actually solve Schrodinger equation. Um, the mathematical tools we have, the mathematical training you have are enough to actually solve Schrodinger equation in this circumstance. And these are, so once again, I'm essentially taking what your textbook covers in this section chapter seven, section six, and they kind of go through this quickly because they are um, putting in what ought to be in a, um, several modules into a single section. But let me just uh, um, 
put it on a particular place so that you have some idea of where we are heading to. Um, so so um, here they are working out the case for where you have two steps actually, a step up and then a step down. And then when, when they talk about tunneling, it's the idea that particle here, which has some energy, which is not high enough to classically go over this barrier, actually ends up getting transmitted on this side. You saw this on, a, on the simulation lab. And in this um, section, they actually go through the calculation and do all that. So that's where we are heading to. But in the interest of time, what I'm essentially going to cover in class is this portion here, just the first step. And um, we won't do the second step, because I feel like there's not enough time to do everything there. Um, but we will actually look at the two different cases. We'll look at the case where incoming energy is less than the, uh, the step size. And we'll look at when the incoming energy is more than the step size. So, um, so it'll have more variety that way. So that's uh, one other situation where we can actually solve this Schrodinger equation. And um, you can kind of see why. Um, let's see. So Schrodinger equation um, with step potential, meaning when you look at um, this potential energy function, it, it's a piecewise linear function. In fact, it's a piecewise linear horizontal line function. So it, uh, um, it, here's, the, here's one kind of simplest step. It can be 0 for all values of x below some particular value. Let's make things easy for ourselves. And let's say for x less than or equal to 0. And it, when x becomes greater than 0, then the potential energy changes discontinuously. And it becomes some constant value of v0. And this is a situation where we can actually solve the Schrodinger equation exactly. We have enough tools in our arsenal to actually go through that. And this is really the reason why. Uh, let me rewrite this so that I have this potential with the energy term. I'm just going to move this over to the right hand side. Then this is what Schrodinger equation becomes. Minus h bar squared over 2m, second position derivative of wave function is equal to. Um, so I guess uh, let me write down three different forms here. The first would be the most general form. Um, so I'm imagining moving this over and factoring out the wave function. So e minus v of x psi x. Now, this one is a difficult equation to solve. In fact, if you have taken differential equations, you kind of know that without knowing the exact form of this function v, um, there is no general solution. You need to know what this function v as a function of x is. Right? How many of you here taken differential equations are taking? Like you've seen that, right? Yeah. So this case we don't do because <laughs> there's no general analytical solution. Now, if my potential is, is zero, then that's a, a situation where we have already solved it before. It's simply e psi x. And we've done that before. We know how to do it. I guess you get oscillatory solution. And you, uh, you, you kind of, you are almost done. Um, even in the second case, it's still doable. Because all you have is this constant value e will now have become e minus v0. So instead of dealing with one constant value, you are simply dealing with a slightly different constant value. So in, at least in general idea, this, so because this is constant, this is essentially the same equation as this. With one possibly key difference, 
before I mention anything, does, can anyone see what one possible key difference between these two might be? The symbol it can be negative or positive. The sign, yeah. The energy, if you are dealing with a free particle, energy kind of has to be positive. Like negative kinetic energy makes no sense. <laughs> like I don't know what even that means. Um, so well, you, so you have positive energy. And you can have positive potential, which means now here, there's a possibility of this constant being, uh, being negative. And somehow you have to be able to find a wave function, which makes physical sense with that in mind. So that's really the only thing new here. Your, um, your constant here might be negative instead of positive, And you'll have a different class of solutions that matches that. 